It's pie time. Due to some violent content intended for m- 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 mature audiences, parental discretion is advised. The following program is closed captioned for the. I was eating ass today. You're excited. That little thing is out. No. Lay it down. Oh, oh my God. God. I'm the dog, yeah. and there's Louise. Yes, please. No, that's what we need to change the name of the show. The Sports Breaker. And Louise. <laughs> and Louise. Hey, yeah. it's Moose, actually, and there's Nadia. We're here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. Central Time. Hey, Shay. Shay, woo-hoo. woo-hoo. Uh, I oh. should, I should admit, are you drinking a beer? <laughs> Ooh. I am um, on a oh, it's been a fucking day on a Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday, right? So Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, Dennis. sweet. I undersold it. Nice. On a Wednesday. Yeah. Why are you drinking beer on a Wednesday? Ooh, it was a long day at work. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> okay. I, what uh, are you drinking? Uh, throat coat tea. Sure. By the way. I'm the best dad ever, so it's official. All you other dads, you're losers. You ain't even the losers. You ain't even the best dad in that house. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm so easy. true. You, you do all right for yourself. I, f- I, there are a lot of times I feel like I'm a bad dad because, like in the mornings and at night, for whatever reason, it's tough to deal with Evie. Wait, you say the morning and the night? Yeah. So you deal with her between the hours of like noon and five? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, cause I'm, I'm Mr. I'm, you know, Mr. Mom, so I'm right. helping her with like homework and school stuff, cause she's virtual schooling, and she's, uh, you know, she's cool during the day, and I think it's cause her ADHD pills kicked in by then, but in the morning sometimes it's kind of tough, and I'm not good in the mornings either, so. Mm. Like, I'm fine, but it's hard for me. I'm not good at dealing with a fucking 10 year old in the morning. Moose, no one's good at dealing with 10 year olds in the morning. That doesn't mean you're a bad dad. If you loved looking forward to hanging out with Evie in the morning, I'd call the cops because you're a serial killer. Like, no one wakes up every day and is like, yeah, I get to deal with my 10 year old who doesn't love paying attention. I'm so blessed. The, um, yeah, no, it's, uh, and it's, you sometimes feel like everything you say is affecting them permanently for the, for the rest of their life, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. but you know, uh, it's a learning process. I didn't know. I've heard the term tween. Mm. I didn't know exactly what that was. I thought that meant like the year or two leading up to teenage years. That's what I thought. Is but, it not that? No, according to Jody, it's it's uh it's like nine to thirteen, somewhere in there. Uh, really? Nine, nine up until thirteen, I would imagine while well, you're twelve. Yeah. But uh yeah, she's technically a tween, I guess. I gotta turn this that, light down a little bit. That makes sense. Ooh, Super Nintendo, what you drinking? He got a little drinky food too. Ooh. Are you wearing jeans? Yeah, why not? You wear jeans in your house? Um, it's yeah. Oh I mean, no, I'm calling well, the cops. <laughs> it's it's because I kind of work here, you know. Yeah. Like dealing with Mabel's school shit and Evie's school shit, and getting lunch ready and cleaning here and there, putting stuff away, dishes, da 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 da. You know, and also I do you know the voice work from home and podcast stuff. It's kind of like. Not- it's kind of like, you know, when you, when I get up, uh, you know, sometimes I'll have on like the loafy pants, the loafy shorts on, but you know, if I want to feel like I'm going to get stuff done, I get dressed, you know, I gotta get, I gotta get the proper clothes on the jeans. I was going to say, yeah, the whole like dress productive, be productive nonsense. Yeah. You know, I don't put on a tie and, you know, khakis, but I want to feel like I'm up and at it for the day. Please put on like a t-shirt tie, a tie t-shirt. What's it called? The tuxedo shirt. Yeah. 
Yeah. That'll do it. Then I'll feel like I'm about to drive somebody's limousine for them. And just paint on like a really shitty mustache. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a really bad goatee. You know, you already have facial hair, but just like draw on. Uh, Shay said Gwen at 6 a.m. is too much. And Alicia said her daughter is hell in the mornings. Yeah. So y'all, there you go. Y'all can have a little support group. Yeah. And also I think um, it's the age, but also I think it's uh, has to do with Evie being stuck at home. And she swears she likes being at home. She loves staying at home. But, you know, I think any kid... Especially, you know, in those developmental years, they need to be around their friends and play and go to school. And Evie's not getting that. She will, yeah. knock on wood, hopefully Omicron isn't too bad. She will be going to school in um, January. Mm. Yeah, but it looks like Alicia's got issues with her daughter in the mornings as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ugh. I don't know how y'all do it. What are you up to, Super Nintendo? Are we drinking a Budweiser? Life changes are happening. I'm actually going to be taking time off to move to a different house, change insurance companies, and now Progressive is mad at me. Lots of stress, and it's only hump day. There was this man. This won't um, be my only beer tonight, he says. Super Nintendo, who you will probably relate to. Moose, you will too. I mean, that, so we, where I work downtown, there's a large homeless population by where I work. And every once in a while, you'll get like a homeless person who comes to the law office and like claims that they have a civil rights lawsuit against pretty much everybody. But uh, I'm sitting there today and I'm at my desk like tippity tappity tap. And I just hear, <clears throat> fuck this. <laughs> and this goes on for like 45 seconds. And I'm sitting there and I, I kind of like tune it out for the first five seconds. And I'm like, hmm. And I kind of pause and I'm like, hmm. What is that? And it's this old, very unwell man, like carrying oh. his pillow and his sleeping bag, just like cursing up a storm, telling everyone to go fuck themselves. Nice. And he leaves and he's so loud that they can actually hear him in the courtroom. So he leaves and a sheriff's deputy comes to our door and he's like, hey, uh, did you, who was that screaming? Is he still around? And I pointed to him and he was outside. And the guy goes, oh, okay, well, you know, as long as he's not in here anymore. And I said, yeah, but you know, honestly, relatable. <laughs> <laughs> Can't blame him. <laughs> Fuck this shit. Yeah, he was cursing everybody in their mama's name, too. I was, I was, I don't want to say I was entertained because he's clearly not well, but I was like, good for him. <laughs> yeah. Good for him. I, um, uh, I, uh. I was at a stoplight yesterday and I, uh, <clears throat> and there's a guy, he, obviously he was down on his luck because he was literally writing on a piece of cardboard with a Sharpie. Mm. And I, uh, I pulled out a five and I put it in the uh, window, you know, like r rolled it down and kind of then pinned it up in the window. And I honked on the horn and pointed at it. And I, he stood up and I think he was like, Thought I was pointing at something in the sky. Oh no! Yeah. But uh, then I, I I pointed again, and then he figured it out, grabbed it, went back to writing his thing. But yeah, we both had a couple encounters with some uh, down on their luckies, I guess. Yeah. But there you know what? One... And it, it just sorry, real quick. And I'm not yeah. trying to pat myself on the back by any means, but it's amazing. You hear people talk about like when you help and volunteer that it really is fulfilling. And I, I've been thinking about that for a couple of days, just giving that guy $5 and it feels good. You know, it just feels like fulfilling. So I yeah. get, I get why some people do the volunteer work. And when COVID's over, we, we told Evie, we, we want her to, we're going to take her to go volunteer at a soup kitchen or something. So she can see what some people have to deal with and how or good she's got she it. Or she can read to the pets. That's a thing? Yeah. ARL, uh, Shay, I don't know if Aheins does it because um, a lot of Aheins animals have like foster families, but yeah, kids can come in and read to the, to the, to the animals. All right. Well, that's, there you go. Evie Maybe. will just be in a room <clears throat> surrounded by cats and she will become the cat whisperer. That one, she'd probably like that. I, I do probably. want her to get exposed and help with, uh, you know, some people who need help and just so she can 
you know, she needs to be exposed to that because it's, you know, it's good to give back and help people out. And also, I want her to see how good she has it. <laughs> I know, but it's it's also, I'm always torn on that because it's sad to use other people's misfortune as a lesson. You know what I mean? Like, don't turn out like Jeb over there, homeless at the stoplight. Don't do it. Like, it's, I don't know. It's kind of weird to me. I think it's, like it's, it's, it's good, but is it good? I think it's, it's how you do it. It's how you approach it. Yeah. You know, I would never say point at some homeless guy and Evie, don't be like that guy. No, do better. You know, do better. <laughs> it, it's, you know, instead of doing that, I would just rather, you know, pull over and give him a couple bucks or go yeah. bring him a hot cocoa or something. Super Nintendo says, I once gave someone on an off ramp my sandwich and Gatorade. He dropped his sign and started to eat before I even left the ramp. Well, yeah. hell yeah, he's hungry. Not bad. I don't even want to venture. Like, that's one of my biggest f fears. And if it's legit or not, I don't know, but is to be homeless, you know? To lose yeah. everything to the point where you're like sleeping under the underpass or living in a car i just i don't ever want to get there yeah no one ever really wants to get there but a lot of people find themselves there i was talking to my boss today about you know like growing up poor and he said oh yeah when i lived in london when he because he went to school in england he was like i used to literally eat food like out of dumpsters and he was like i once got in a fist fight over food over chicken curry in a dumpster Wow. And I was like, Jesus Christ, Keith, you should write a book. Like, just the amount of shit that he's done in his life. I'm like, how are you still alive? Eh, he's, he's, he's got wild stories, but. Uh. <clears throat> Good for you, Super Nintendo, by the way. Good job on providing that drink and sandwich. Yeah, to all the friends who volunteer and make someone or something's life a little easier. Shay, looking at you. With your little fostering of the doggies. Dog fostering. Check it and see. Got a fever of 103. Buy our merchandise. We got some new designs. Check out that segue. Check out that segue. Oh, yeah. What's the new, new, new design? You know, I don't, th I don't think it's up there yet. I uh, very much enjoy the, um, the boom box design. The retro boombox. And then the surf design. Very Dave Matthews band. Yes. I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah, I like it. Let's see. There's the uh, surf truck. Yeah, it's not. You it's, a, huh? I was going to say, get you a little gift for Christmas or Hanukkah or. Yeah. Um, yeah. Honda days. Yeah. Happy Honda Days, everybody. Happy Honda Days. God bless us. V6, every one of us. Yeah. So go to morningmooshow.com, click on merch, t shirts, and shit, and uh, order you a shirt. Oh, Shay said we need dog clothes. I don't know if that'd, that's available. That'd be hilarious, though. Thor <clears> and Lucy <throat> would hate it. Thor and Lucy actually are so big, they just wear people shirts. Yeah, I don't think dog clothes is really like something that would move the needle. We can't even sell t-shirts, so. If you had like doggy bandanas, that'd be cute. Mm. But, you know. Uh, oh, pardon me. Once so, we get the bigger audience, more people will be buying the clothes. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. That helps us out, and you don't have to watch stupid commercials. So, get into Great. that. Do it. We also need to get your guys' thoughts on what to do for a New Year's Eve show. Because New Year's Eve is on a Friday this year. But we weren't sure, like, do we do one at the regular time? Do we do one later and then literally ring in the new year on the show? Or, yeah, what are y'all's thoughts on that? I'll give you some time to think on it. Veg about it. <clears throat> well, I thought, I was thinking that 10 to midnight sounded good. Then to midnight. Then to midnight. We could even maybe have on a feed of uh, like, you know, one of the New Year's shows and just kind of pop in and make fun of that once in a while. That's what I was hoping for, because last year the New Year's Eve shows were goddamn terrible. 
Um, J Lo was awful. Cindy Lauper was out here wild in. It was bad. Uh, you know what? I, you know what I figured out with the New Year's Eve stuff, whether it's on ABC, NBC, whatever, Fox is it's essentially just like a Super Bowl halftime show stretched out over two hours, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's all it is. It's just people in sequin clothes and choreographed dancers performing songs and Carson Daly. Oh, God damn, Carson. Can we, I also need to, I need to know the origin of why all of the sparkly dresses are for New Year's Eve. Like I get the countdown and fireworks, but it's just, see, it's too many fucking sequins. What is, what is the deal with all of the sequin shit? I think it's a matter of, uh, cause like New Year's Eve parties are supposed to be kind of not formal, but kind of pompous -y and not extravagant, but kind of extra flair. You know, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're, if your barbecue backyard barbecue with friends is a, a five, the New Year's Eve is supposed to be like a nine, right? They said, but you can't get sloppy drunk in those clothes. I remember the first time I ever got drunk. I was like 16 and it was a New Year's Eve party. And this was still very much like in my butchy phase um, of high school where I like only wore sports bras and had gauges and like didn't put makeup on and shopped pretty much exclusively for shirts at like Hot Topic and Spencer's. And ate pussy. Uh, none of that. Anyway. I was eating ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went to this New Year's Eve party and like did not get the memo of the clothing. So I wore um, this hilarious shirt that I bought that said, <clears throat> it's not a party until the sausage comes out. And it was like a hot dog with the party hat on running. And I thought it was the funniest thing. And I get there and all the high, other high school girls were dressed in like sequin tight dresses, heels, burr, 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 burr. but you know who was the most comfortable that night? Me. Yeah. Uh, I've been to a couple New Year's parties, but it's um, it's usually just been uh, kind of chill, relax, you know, your jeans and your polo shirt, and that's about it. There was, I, I think I did go to one that was like, I think it was a star New Year's thing. I forget what. It, no, it was. Oh, a, okay, never mind. Yeah, no, no. I know what you're talking about. yeah, I didn't do that, actually. But that one, I think, is <laughs> okay. more like you wear a tuxedo or something. Yeah. Um, Megan and her husband, Nick, the Catholics, God bless them, are doing a holiday party this weekend and it is black tie affair. And I was like, God damn it, y'all. I don't want to put on a dress. Ugh. Like, what is it with you and your theme parties? Can't you make it a pajama party instead? Why, yeah. are, we, why are we doing this? Shay said, I want, I went to one at the rescue rang in the new year passing around puppies. Oh, that'd be so cute. Look at the puppos. I got uh, actually invited to a New Year's party this year. Ooh. You ain't got <clears throat> friends. Who did it? <clears throat> Chris Myers. He's a he's a friend. He uh, when I got laid off and Jody's dad died, he he brought over some smoked meat that he had smoked in his uh, yeah. a smoker. Right. And uh, yeah, we've been friends for a few years. He used to be a meteorologist on Channel Five and. He's been working for the DNR for quite a while now, but oh, nice. uh, yeah, he invited uh, he invited us over. I think kid free New Year's Eve too. Nice, but we're not quite right. there with the vaccinations. So, oh, always good to get an invite, though. It is. It's nice to just be recognized and be kind of like somebody say, "Hey, friend." I don't even need to be in a, invited. <laughs> I've, I've said this before. Just send me a text asking how I'm doing. That's all I need. Notice me. Exactly. But, uh, yeah. So what is this spending cleanse? Okay. So first of all, as we all know. Is this just not buying as much? Because no. I'll save everybody 20 minutes. No. And it's not going to be 20 minutes. It'll be like five. So as you all know, Tyler and I are getting worried. And, oh my God, congrats. Oh my God, thank you so much. So one of the things that comes along with that purportedly is sharing a bank account. Hmm. Now, as we all know, Tyler makes significantly more money than I do. You don't need to know numbers, just know it's, you know. <clears throat> so, and I have a lot of debt. 
Tyler has like no debt. So I was thinking like, I need to get better about my finances. I need to learn. I need to have better saving and spending habits. Bippity boppity boo. So I'm listening to this like finance 101 podcast. And there's a story about this woman. Her name is Kate Flanders. She's this Canadian broad. Mongo said, Cheryl, what now? (laughs) (laughs) Mongo's got his shit like hidden under the floorboards, like just bricks of gold. I think what Mongo means is he he and Shay probably don't have a joint checking account. Yeah. Some couples do that. They have their own accounts. Yeah. And which we're still trying to figure out exactly how we want to do that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But um, I I heard the story about this woman named Kate Flanders. And she went on, I think back in 2015, maybe 2014, went on a spending cleanse, which meant she didn't buy anything outside of like food for the for the house she didn't buy clothes for a year or it was for four years she didn't buy any new clothes she didn't get any takeout she didn't get any delivery she'd get none of that like extra nonsense she did nothing she must be single with no kids because there's no way you could do that correct she's single with no kids um and ended up saving in the course of four years, like 20 grand. Now she didn't have any debt by that point. She'd already paid her debt off, but I was very inspired. And I was like, well, I can't do all of that now. Cause you know, I have debt and that won't work very well. But I was like, you know what I can do is cut down on buying clothes. Cause I buy a lot of clothing. I have a lot of clothing. And I think it was a year or two ago, Tyler bet me that I couldn't go a month without buying new clothes. And I won. So Tyler had to take me on a shopping spree and that was a whole thing. That was more than a year ago. Yeah. Maybe a year or two. We were still at the old job. Yeah. And so I made a bet with myself that come January 1st <clears throat> of 2022, I will not buy a single new piece of clothing for the entire year. Bullshit. Yeah, that's my goal. I know. I told that to my boss today and he goes, I'm giving you till fucking March. <laughs> I was like, okay, Keith rude. So won't buy any new clothing for a year? Correct. So you could go to Goodwill. You could I, you could go to like Thread Up or whatever these online kind of, you know. Yeah. Be stock. But there will be no new new additions of clothing to my closet. There will be not a single new piece will be added to my closet. Unless I'm wearing all of my underwear at, at like together and shit in it all at the same time and need new underwear. But Nope, no new clothes. Don't do that. Year. Don't wear all your underwear and shit in it. Yeah, I've I've read that's not ideal. That's that's bad. Yeah. The, so what if something pops up like you know somebody you guys get invited to some not fancy party but some party where you don't have anything to wear literally then what? I don't I don't know what kind you of don't party go to the party. I have a lot of formal dresses. All right. So as long as as long as I don't like gain a lot of weight within the next year and can still fit in all my shit. You know, like, and even Keith was like, well, you've got, you know, uh, like a bridal shower coming up. You got a bachelorette party. And he's like, I know you're going to want to buy new clothes. And I was like, but the whole thing is I have a lot now. Are and you, I just, yeah. Are you planning honeymoon the next year? I don't know. We haven't gotten that far ahead. We were thinking that we would go on our honeymoon in the winter and go somewhere warm. Yeah, that's, that's what the smart people do. In more Hawaii, more expensive that way. Or something like that. <clears throat> My therapist went to uh, Fiji, I think. Oh, yeah. Tyler's parents went to St. Lucia and they really liked it. Hmm. But uh, I, I, you know, if you have pretty much everything covered, you should be okay. I'm trying to think of like a, a, dra- <clears throat> a clothing situation that would pop up, you know, suddenly yeah. where you'd have to go out to Kmart and get something. Kmart? What did you? What do we flash back to? Two thousand three. The first store you thought of was Kmart. Kmart's funnier than saying Kohl's. Yeah, or like Sears. Oh, you should have said Sears. <laughs> Sears. Sears is no good because everybody knows Sears is gone. I think That's some true. people still think Kmart is still around. Kmart closed out here for sure. Nadia, oh, you should yeah. have come to come to up down. Tyler didn't want to come. Oh, hey Seth. Yeah, because we are going to the Iowa State game tomorrow and wanting to like be home for tonight. So oh, okay, we're gonna go watch basketball. Yeah, I, I, 
You know, you you might just go through with it the whole year. I don't know. I would have said if I were you, I would have said I'm going to go six months without buying new clothes. And if you make it to six months, you might be like, you know, I'm going to go another six months. Yeah, I think I think I have to start with the year because otherwise, if I were to hit six, six months, I'd be like, OK, I'm done. I'm going to go buy everything. You know? Yeah. So, Is that how it's going to um, work after the end of the year? You haven't bought anything. And then like December 31st, 2022, you have like this Amazon bill for four thousand dollars. Right. I'm hoping that it will help me realize because I don't know if for for people who grew up like not having a lot, I think image is really important to us. So for me, if I go to an event and I have another event two weeks later in a different state, I'm like, well, I can't wear the same outfit to those two events because why would I do that? Like I obviously need a new outfit to go to this other event. Like that's just how yeah. my brain works. It's like I have to look, I have to have this image of blah 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 blah, blah. and you really don't. So well, she, she kind of, had kind of, she had a good question. What about dog clothes and accessories? <laughs> um, well, we don't buy the dogs' clothes really. Like they have bandanas, but the whole point of this is no new additions will be added to my closet. To my closet. Okay. So, so all right, what about accessories? I don't really buy a lot of accessories, so I'm not really worried about that. <laughs> Watch, instead of clothes, you're just going to go nuts on earrings and necklaces. and Just have a wicked scrunchy collection yeah. by the end of the year. <laughs> Tyler's like, what's with all these fucking bracelets? I'm like, There's bracelets, bracelets everywhere. everywhere. I'm bringing jelly bracelets back. Ugh. You're like the Mr. T of hand wear slap, slap bracelets. bracelets. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, good luck to you. I like how the woman who uh, did this is like, I did it. It's so easy. It's like she's single, no kids. There's no way you could do that with kids. Oh, no. And, and, that, wasn't and her, that wasn't her thing, though. It was just like, no, I, know. I have, because she said the whole reason she started this was because she couldn't find her can opener in her house because she was like, I have too many pots and pans. And so she just, she got rid of 70% of her belongings. Now, bitch, I ain't doing all that. I ain't getting rid of 70% on nothing. But yeah. I can cut back on my clothing purchases, so I'm going to start there. Absolutely. You know, if we all just looked around in our houses, our respective houses, there's probably 70% of it could go, and you wouldn't feel it. Yeah. Not and, not uh, counting the kids' room, because that's about 95%. Yeah. Yeah, right. All the stuffed animals, all the stuffy loveys, all the Barbies, all yeah, all that nonsense. Uh, well, then we even started looking at our wedding registry, and I was like, we don't need half this shit <laughs> like delete 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 yeah. delete delete yeah yeah jody was looking um her work is you know they're doing a you know gifts for the employees and you get to pick your gift it's oh nice yeah it's it's kind of, i don't want to say it's tchotchke garbage but mm. you know there's stuff on there like uh a gourmet coffee set uh an incense thing um one was a, and there's a couple decent things. Like one's like a, a personal blender, you know, a small blender for smoothies or something. Oh yeah. And then there's other things like an LED lamp and an, an LED lamp. It's like kind of a nice looking, multicolored. It's like the Benetton of lamps. But anyway, and there's like markers and shit. And you know, I have, she asked me to help her go through it, and I'm, we're looking through it, and I'm just kind of like, eh. This all looks like crap and it's, it's nice that they're doing it and it's just a hundred percent of it. We don't need. So I think we just went with the coffee because, you know, we like good coffee once in a while. It's almost like, you remember when you were a kid and you would sell candles or chocolate and it was something along the lines of you had to sell 50 to get a really shitty pencil and if you yeah. sold 10,000, you got like a $10 gift card. It's like the adult version of that. <laughs> You know what, you know, you just made me think of like a good analogy, like adulting these days is a lot like getting tickets at Chuck E. Cheese. You bust your ass to get all those tickets and then you take it to the counter and then here's your rubber spider. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? It really honestly is like that. And like for Christmas and everything, Tyler and I decided like we're not doing presents because we actually had to sit down and think of, you know, 
in a very privileged position to sit and actually have to think about stuff that you want. We don't really want anything. We don't really need anything. Like, I don't, I don't need any more shit. <laughs> I really don't. Yeah, we all, we all probably have too much shit. But some of that shit brings you joy. Like if you're into fishing, you know, fishing gear brings you joy or guitars, whatever. See, but those are like experiences. Like those are actual things that bring you joy when you do them. Clothes, it's like a brief moment of joy. And then I have to keep buying more clothes to feel that joy. But with a guitar, that's like a one-time purchase, right? You have that around for, you know, a long time. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, No. Yeah, the clothing is definitely its own unique thing. Much like stupid news is. Sorry, it's just a stupid little button here. Stupid uh, news. Stupid news. Stupid news. Every uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at seven thirty Central Time. What's going on there, Nadia? Well, you know, Moose, you mentioned that some people love guitars, some love fishing, some really just love chicken wings. So we're going up north to Canada where police got a call about a motor vehicle that failed to remain at the scene after colliding with another car. And within 30 minutes, police received a second call of a vehicle stopped in an intersection, just completely not moving middle of the intersection. So police get there and realize that one is the same car from both incidences. And two, it was just a guy who stopped his car in the middle of the intersection to finish his chicken wings. <laughs> now that to me, frankly, is dedication. <laughs> he is a 67 year old guy uh, named William New Love. And he actually was so enthralled with his chicken wings that he didn't even know he hit the other car. Like he was like driving, driving. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so he was driving while eating the wings. Yeah, not driving while drunk, driving while dunking the wings and the sauce. DWW, driving while winging. Yeah. Shay said priorities. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Judy. Hey, girl. Hello. She says hello. Hello. I freaking love chicken wings. Of all the things to eat while driving, chicken wings are not in the top five, not even top 10. I have eaten a fried chicken breast while driving before. Not great. Not ideal. <laughs> no, that's not a driving food. Like when you're driving, the food has to be like not too crumbly, you know, chunky, uh, fall apart, whatever. Yeah. It's essentially a sandwich, you know, yeah. a sandwich that, you know, isn't too tough. You know, it's like, like a tough piece of meat. That you what have you to mean? really work at. You guys, what do you guys just not eat spaghetti while you're driving? Come on! I told you. You remember? Uh, you don't. You don't know Tracy Arthur, but she used to fill in for uh, back in the day for Amy when Amy was there, and she she drove she drove while eating cereal. <laughs> like of all the foods to eat while driving, I'd probably rather have her eat wings than eat cereal. Cereal is just, there's too many moving parts, literally. Like the milk, if you slam on the brakes, the milk's going to go everywhere. Then the cereal's going to go everywhere. Then the glass is going to break or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mongo said, I've eaten a lot of things while driving. Wings, not one of them. Super Nintendo stopped for eight minutes on a country road to finish his food. That's a little different. You're out in the middle of like a gravel road on Route 20 and, you know, Webster City, Iowa, wherever, not Route 20, but off there, whatever, you know, yeah, you're fine. But as you're far good. as like driving through the downtown areas, no, that's not a good idea. Pull over. It's, <laughs> it's always like anytime I hit, there are those lights that you always hit and they take forever. But it's like when I'm trying to eat something, as soon as I sit there, the light turns green and I'm like, God damn it, I'm trying to eat. <laughs> I want a bite of my chicken sandwich. It's a, Ooh. it's a little interesting. Like the, the car manufacturers accommodate stuff like your cell phone and, um, you know, the compartments for your wallet or whatever. Uh, you think that you think they'd incorporate something to promote safe eating while driving? Cause 
in this day and age, you know, everybody's in a hurry, go, go, go. You know, put in a little taco warmer slot. No, the, you know what console. you can use? The little sunglass thing. You can put your taco right there. Well, where am I going to put my sunglasses? I can't eat my sunglasses. Put them in the taco. No one will know. Yeah, fair enough. There's your stupid news. Jeez, that's stupid. Damn you, stupid news. Jeez, that's stupid. <laughs> now I want wings. Now I want wingies. You ever been to that wing stop place? No, no. I've not. Is it I good? I haven't been there either. I have no I, clue. Um, I'm in charge of ordering the food for our um, great, for the great hurting law office blackout of 2021. I'm in charge of ordering the food and I ordered from Cute Smokehouse. I don't know if you they oh. came into the studio once. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they have wings that I was about to order. I ordered like a bunch and then I realized that not a lot of people were coming. So I had to take the wings off the order, but still. You just, just order them, take the wings home when they come. <laughs> Tell me why my dumb ass. I ordered two gallons mac and cheese. <laughs> 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 my boss said, Nadia, take my card, order what we need for the party. I said, you're going to regret everything about this. Yeah, you order what you think everybody's going to want. And then whatever those things that you like, you order twice yeah. the quantity. That's what I did. Two gallons of cracked potatoes, two gallons of mac and cheese, bitch. We're here. I'm my, a little... boss said, how? my boss said, how much did you spend? I said, don't, 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 don't. you gave me the card. Okay. You let me do it. Thank you. I'm a little disappointed Cued doesn't deliver and or they're not on DoorDash or whatever. But it almost, I feel like it would be a disgrace to the meat. You know what I mean? If it sat in the door, because it's in Waukee. So it would take like 30 minutes for them to get to your house. Yeah, but good barbecue is good barbecue. You know, it's true. It's going to, it's going to be fine. All you have to do is order over $160 of it and then they deliver. I mean, that that won't take long. No, it won't. <laughs> That's probably like five menu items, I think. Vagrant Fierro says shells and cheese is better. At well, Cute, yeah. is that what you're talking about? Or just in general, shells and cheese? Yeah, because if we're talking in general, obviously shells and cheese are better than that bitch-ass craft. But <laughs> no, Cute Smokehouse got good. They got good mac and cheese. And it but, is shells also. Thank you. Shells and cheese. Let's move on to Am I the Asshole? Nah, 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 nah. This has become like, I think, one of my favorites. It's a fun Wednesday hump day thing. And sometimes they're not like, it's it's not super easy. It's not super obvious. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, like the one I brought, it's, it's pretty obvious, pretty easy. But you found this one. Yes, I found this one. And I'm kind of torn on it, mostly because... Um, I've experienced some of it. So this woman posts, I and my husband have a daughter. Since she was born, my mother-in-law has been at me asking me when I'm going to get her ears pierced. My daughter will not be having her ears pierced until she asks for it. So definitely not yet when she can't even speak. My mother-in-law says it's hypocritical of me considering all the piercings I have. Several piercings on both ears plus my nose. But my own mother wouldn't let me even get my earlobes pierced until I was 10. Mother-in-law had both sister-in-laws pierced when they were tiny, and she keeps going on about how, quote, it's better because they won't remember it. My husband says he supports whatever decision I make on the matter because I'm the one who would have to clean it. I stay home with the baby. So a few weeks ago, mother-in-law was looking after the baby for us because I was going to my husband's uncle's funeral. As I was coming down the stairs, I hear my mother-in-law talking to the baby about how, quote, they're going to go out shopping and get her some pretty earrings. I went into the room and told her in no uncertain terms that that would not be happening. And if I can't trust her to respect my decisions about my own daughter, I would find someone else to look after her. Mother-in-law keeps trying to arrange to have her for a few hours. She even tried to offer to have her overnight so my mm. husband and I can go out. I told mother-in-law she'd come and visit her, but I no longer trusted her not to get her ears pierced behind my back. So she would not be seeing her unsupervised. Um, my husband and sister-in-laws think I'm overreacting. Am I the asshole? No, because it's your kid. True. It's your kid. And especially if you don't want them to have earrings, whether the mother-in-law thinks that, oh, this is the time to do it because they won't feel it as much, whatever. 
that's not, I mean, it's, it's ear piercing. It's not, it's not, you know, severing a finger, you know, right. when you're 10 or 10 months, you get your ears pierced. It's going to sting the same. I would think you just won't remember it as much if you get it at 10 months. Like, so in Hispanic culture, particularly, it's kind of a big thing to like have your ears pierced when you're an infant. So I'm Puerto Rican. Um, Mi abuela actually pierced our ears when we were infants. Like she did it herself. It's a big thing. And so like, I was actually convinced when I was a kid that I was just born with my ears pierced because I've had them pierced for, you know, damn near my entire life, give or take a couple weeks. Um, so I was like, well, that's kind of weird. Like, it doesn't really matter. You're just going to have this hole in your ear. Who gives a shit? Um, but then I was like, you know what? No, because she told this mother-in-law spe- spe- specifically, you know, we're going to wait until she's older. And the mother-in-law said, oh, we're going we're gonna to go out and get you some, some, some pretty earrings. Hey, hey. Cause then you just, then you just can't trust your mother-in-law. Cause anytime now she asks like, oh, do you want me to watch the baby? You're going to be thinking, you're going to take my kid to get her ears pierced. And let's be real here. She's not going to take him to like a clean sanitary place. You don't take that baby to Claire's. <laughs> yeah. Now the smart thing is to take him to a tattoo place. Yeah. But could you imagine like Gunther, the big tatted guy in the baby? Like, oh, all right. Hold still. Yeah. I don't think Gunther would be cool <laughs> at that. No, it's uh, yeah. A vagrant fear said babies with piercings are silly. I agree. That looks. I always when I see baby with pierced ears, I'm like, hmm, hmm, no. Oh, I looked cute with mine. Oh God, I was precious. <laughs> of course, yeah. You're the exception to the four million plus rule. Yeah, it was but, kind of just like your your abuela takes you and you come back and you got your ears pierced. <laughs> What's funny is I, I won't say who, but a friend of mine's kid, um, his mother said, uh, I think this is a little while ago, I guess like, oh, I'm going to take him to his work. I'm going to take him to his, fr-, or maybe said to the kid, grandma's going to take you to your first movie. And he said, oh no, you're not, you know, like that's, that's his thing. He wants to do that. So mm. And I think she backed off, but you know, it's like the grandparents, the mother-in-laws, the father-in-laws, a lot of them just feel like they have, they have like, they, they can go around the kid to the grandkid. Well, I raised you and you turned out just fine. So what's the problem? You know? So I'm going to take little Jimmy here to the monster truck smash. We're in the front row. He'll be fine. Yeah. No, but. You know, like somebody said in the chat, it's your kid, your rules. Never F with mama bear, vagrant fear says. Yeah. Super Nintendo said, I refuse to let my daughter get her ears pierced until she has her own want and will and will to get it done. Then I'll take her myself, make it an experience for her, not decorating a child that can't make her own decisions. Yeah. yeah. But I, we but told, then- Evie wanted, has been wanting to get her ears pierced since she was like five or six. And we told her when you're, 10 we'll get your ears pierced and she's 10 now but covid and so you know just get just do it yourself pull up pull a parent trap get your needle ready heat that shit up stick it in there evie's gonna have like a pierced temple and like a (laughs) a pierced ear yeah that'll work (laughs) that'll work that'll do just get the lighter precisely all right, here, here we go. <laughs> You're like, now Evie, it's going to sting a little. And she's like, dad, that's my nose. Well, we'll do that too. Well, You're going to be the coolest kid in fourth grade with your nose pierced. <laughs> you got the two for one. And in, guess what? In a couple weeks, it's going to turn purple with infection. Rad. You're going to get a whole new nose. A whole new nose. Dad <sighs> doesn't know what he's doing with that needle. No, it's just, this goes like to your wedding stuff in a way, you know, the, the in-laws are going to try and dictate this and that. And you've already mentioned that it wasn't too bad, but it's just, they always feel like they have, because they raised a kid, they can just, you know, barge their way into the door and be like, I'm going to grab this and that and that of your life, whatever it is. 
it's really weird. Some grandparents are very entitled and some are, you know, like, go ask your mom. You know what I mean? There's, there's like no middle ground. It's kind of weird. Well, and then there's some grandparents and I was just talking about this with that friend I mentioned earlier. There's some grandparents who just like, they don't care. Like they don't want to be involved. Don't want to be in, in the kid's life in any way. And that kind of blows my mind. You know, if you're hypothetical situation, if you're a grandparent and you live three hours away and you're in town for, you know, something, there's a swap market going on that you have to be a part of and you don't stop in to say hi to your grandkid or even your kid. It's kind of like, what does that say about you? <laughs> That's so weird because we were like very much partially raised by my grandparents. Like, so the fact that, uh, that some people don't have them in their lives and it's voluntarily because of the grandparents is so weird to me. That's so weird. But no. I mean, people could also say the same thing about me with not having a dad around, but, but honestly, you know, I would take my grandparents away. <laughs> I would, I would take my grandparents over him in a fucking heartbeat. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a bummer. That is so sad. It is. It's too yeah. bad. I always thought, I always thought growing up, uh, and I, I, I thought this way because we, we lived far away from my grandparents that, you know, grandparents usually are tripping over their dicks to, to spend time with their grandkids. And when I hear that, and when I experience that, which I have and am it's I'm used to it by now, but it's, it's just kind of sad. Yeah. It's odd. Yeah. So anyway, boner pills might yeah. help out with Alzheimer's. Ooh, the nursing homes are going to be freaky dinky do once this gets around. Wait, what Everybody. image vagrant fear? What image were you, were you thinking of? Everyone's gonna be boning, boning at the nursing home. Oh, oh my yeah. God! They're just gonna play Bone Thugs in Harmony. <laughs> bone, 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 bone. No, it'll be called Bone Thugs in Memory. Yes. So apparently, the study finds that Viagra is linked to almost seventy percent lowering risk of Alzheimer's. Cleveland Clinic. So this wasn't like you know Joe Kowalski's lab and. Ping pong table clinical research facility. Yeah. Tied a, uh, the, uh, the Viagra, the active drug, active ingredient Viagra is linked to nearly 70% lowering risk of developing Alzheimer's compared to non-users. Do we think it's ironic that the title is giant study finds Viagra is linked because it's like Viagra is a penis pill and it's a giant study. Giant. Mm, I think you're reaching there. Laugh at my jokes. Everything I say should be taken as funny, even if it's not funny at all. I'm so sorry. Yeah, well, when you get old and, you, and I'm, you're not getting any Viagra from me, how about that? So this is a, uh, they've identified sildenafil as a promising candidate drug for Alzheimer's disease. The viability of which can be explored in future randomized clinical trials to determine whether causality does indeed exist. So that's cool. And that's something like, I don't know if it helps my dad's situation because he already has Alzheimer's and is dying from it. But this sounds like this could help in preventing, especially like, you know, I don't, I don't know if Alzheimer's is genetically linked it is, yeah. So I guess I'm at risk for getting Alzheimer's. So yes. maybe this gets to, you know, um, approval of the FDA at some point. And the doctor's like, I go to visit my doctor and I'm 60. And they're like, well, you should probably start taking this now. You know, and no, granted, should... they're probably going to charge you $50,000 a year for the pill. Here's what you do. Start taking it now. And when Jody asks why you're snorting Viagra every day, just be like, I'm taking care of my brain. Now come here. I mean, is Viagra like the super pill now? 
because you know how this started, right? They created Viagra's to treat heart problems or heart disease. Yes, that's and they right. And they found that, oh, yeah, John here is getting an erection. John, were you just thinking about a porno? No. Mm-hmm. No, I just took the pill. Wrong head, man. <laughs> hi <laughs> But so it can help with heart disease, it gets your dick hard, and it prevents Alzheimer's. I wonder how it impacts women, though. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Start growing dicks. Do they have pills for women's sexual libido? They do. Yes, because I've looked into taking them because I have quite literally no sex drive, like ninety eight percent of the time. Right. But yeah, there are there are pills that um, because it's like when your estrogen levels drop, so there are pills that will like up your estrogen levels or whatever or something like that. Which I think the flip side of that is for men, when your estrogen levels rise, I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. Or no, your testosterone drops. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all got the, y'all got the T. We got the E. But men have estrogen, just not nearly as much. Yeah. Women have testosterone. Yeah. There is a disease, um, polycystic ovarian syndrome, where women have too much testosterone. Because I had to get tested for that. Do they? Anyway. I am uh, two years, almost two years off of my testosterone. I haven't had that in, since uh, COVID started for the most part. But uh, do they have a medication, not just for women's sex drive, but do they have one to get the ladies clam juicy? Like some women don't have lubrication okay. down there. The fact that you just said clam juicy makes me want to, and I'm not being, uh, I'm, I'm not being overdramatic here. Roll around in fucking glass. <laughs> this is so disgusting. Ew. Ah, you know, I, I speak <sighs> in medical terms. Yeah, okay. But there's probably something for that, right? To get the uh, the old juices flowing down there. Ew, vagrant fear said red lobster. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> red lobster. Tyler said clam juicy. That's a new one. You ever heard of that? No, it's fucking rose moose. Oh, well. But anyway, let's watch a stupid video. Okay. Sorry, I was looking up vaginal dryness. I was doing research. You know what? I think I've seen an ad for a pill for that now that I think about it. I think I've seen one of those. I can almost see it where it's like, you know, women don't want to talk about it. It's not something, you know, and then it's like, you know, pussathon. It's going to get you... Ready for that moment. <laughs> clam juicex. Talk to your doctor if clam juicex is right Just, for you. I can't stand that you use the phrase clam juicy and pussathon in the same, the same show. I truly the fact that Jody's not pregnant just from living with you is astounding. Just I know, right? What what a hunk of just irresistible man meat you are. Taco sauce. Piss off, vagrant fear. I am working don't out, en- bitch. Don't encourage this. All right. I've been running up and down the driveway. <laughs> I do. I work out in uh, in the house, and I do the driveway, and I hit the heavy bag today. <laughs> I do the driveway. <laughs> I do it. Hey, driveway. Driveway has like a little hole, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, exercise. I can't stand you. Okay. All right. Let's watch this video. Walmart workers don't get paid enough for this shit. Oh, let me They pull it really up. don't. Boop. They Give me really just don't. the screen a little bit so it's easier to see for people watching the Twitch. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the show so you don't have to deal with the ads. And that helps us out. Oh, my God. What the fuck? Oh, my God. What Ready? the fuck? Can I get outside security? Can I get outside security? <laughs> Can I get out there? He's like, Excuse me. Nice. What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh my god. I like, how, I like how he's just sucking on a lollipop or like, like a bomb pop or something. Hey boys. Can I get outside security? Can I get outside security? Can I get 
tries to get out and rolls and then just thuds on the floor. Like he tries to get out kind of effortlessly and then makes it look 10 times harder. <laughs> and you know what? You know it's not the first bomb pop he's had while he's been in there. You know the motherfucker had like a 24 pack of bomb pops while he sat in there. Oh yeah. That was bomb pop. <laughs> that was easily bomb pop number five. Oh, 100%. Shay said Freezer gave birth to a moron. Oh, <laughs> Lord. That he is drunk. And he's still got his tennis shoes on, too. Well, he's not a fool. You can't have, like, chilly digits, you know. Right. You can't have cold toes. And this this can, this can will only happen at a Walmart. You will not see this at a Hy-Vee. No. Hell, you won't even see this at a Price Chopper. Only at a no. Walmart grocery will you see that happen. It's so perfect, though. And that's it's the so thing is, like... It's this vicious cycle that has happened. You know, we got exposed as a society to the crazy loons that populate the Walmarts. Look, everybody goes to Walmart. We go to Walmart. I'm not bagging it, but Walmart has become the Mecca for the crazy weirdos. Yeah, but um, you're not a person of Walmart. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, and it's an endless cycle. They... Like Walmart's going to have to spend a couple hundred million in marketing to try and find a way to get the crazies out. Yeah. To, or think, to keep them out, I should say. I don't think that's going to work. I don't think so. Uh, Bye, Super Nintendo. He said, fiance came home. We got to go put money down on a new rental and get more beers. Well, happy Wednesday to you, good stuff. Get you some then, booze. Yeah. Viagra's. Wednesday inebriation. I don't know where I was going with that. I don't know. You you had pussy juice, clam juice, and pussathon, so you're good for the night. You reached your quota, I think. Clam juice six. New from Gla GlaxoSmithKline. Clam juice. No, it's uh new from Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is Shay said when Walmart was 24 hours, it was a scary place after 10. Are they not 24 hours anymore? Are they not? Ours in our hometown was 24 hours, and let me tell you what. I stole a lot from that one. <laughs> Shay, are you talking about the Walmart on the south side? Maybe that's what she means. Maybe that one's not 24 hours anymore. I had to go to a Walmart once. <sighs> so terrible. So my mom, for the longest time, did not trust, like, PayPal or Venmo or Cash App. So for my birthday, she sent me, like, $100, but a fucking, uh, what's that called? Like, a cashier's check through the Walmart like mm. trans union or whatever the hell. So I had to go get it, like cash it at the Walmart. And I got there like 10 minutes before they opened. Tell me why there was a line, bitch, a line of people to get their shit cash. Yeah. And I'm standing in line. I'm like, I don't know, fifth or sixth in line. And this woman's working the counter. And this guy comes up and it says, obviously like, have your ID with you, bitch. We can't just be out here cash and checks willy nilly for any Fred, Dick and Harry. And this guy goes up and hands her the check. And she was like, do you have your ID ready? And he's like, oh. And she just looks at him and goes, next. <laughs> she wasn't even trying to deal with this man. <laughs> she said, that girl has her stuff ready. Come, come on up, sweetheart. Come on up. I said, here you go. She said, how do you want it back? I said, I don't care. She said, okay. She gave the 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. You have a blessed day. I said, bye, Marsha. In, out, bada bing, bada boom. You got to have your shit ready at the Walmart. She said, next. <laughs> I don't, you think of all the places Walmart would be, you know, able to put up with the crazy person who doesn't have everything ready to go. Not crazy, but, you know. Disheveled. Or or maybe it's just the opposite. She sees so much bullshit there. She's like, right. nope, not dealing with that. That's, this is an easy one. I can just flitter off to the side. And you know, I kind of appreciated that too. She said, you get your shit together. Let me help this one who came prepared. Thanks, Marsha. Back to the video okay. here. What the fuck? Where, where did he change out of his clothes? Maybe he just went in with that on. But you think, but you think somebody would have stopped him before he even got even like, like deep into the store. Not at the Walmart moose and not if it's <clears> a Walmart <throat> in the South. Yeah, fair enough. You know, I, I need to find out where this Walmart is because if it's in the South, which I bet it is, you know, they didn't say not a single quad. Uh, I don't know where it's from. Yeah, I don't know. Darn either. it. 
But anyway, it's it could be any Walmart. It could be the Walmart in downtown New York City. There's just going to be true. some that one, which you would think of if there is one. I don't know. Even that one has the crazies popping in and out. I wonder if he's on like Molly or something and is really warm. Oh, maybe. Yeah, Yeah, because he is in the freezer. He is sucking on a bomb pop. It could be. I doubt it's booze, right? I could. I'm torn because the way he's walking is like he's drunk, you know? Yeah, but I don't know. Have much experience with Molly and meth. But what the fuck? Can I get outside security? Like the way he gets out makes him look drunk. Oof. Look at him walk. He's drunk. He's got to be drunk. I don't know. I I don't know what drunk and Molly high. If there's much difference. Well, if he was high on Molly, you'd hear blah 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 blah. <laughs> Obviously, I think that's gonna do it. It's time to wrap things up. We will be back on Friday, unless there's another tennis match, PCP, maybe. No, I don't have a tennis match until next Saturday. So it's Friday Night Libations on Friday. Maybe we'll do a drink for bits. Mm-hmm. With uh, We'll throw in a pint glass. <gasps> like maybe, pe- maybe people who donate uh, 500 bits or more are in the running for the pint glass. And also in the running for Moose to say clam juice again. Don't say it until then. Clam. Fill in the blank. And we'll have some clam juice. All right. That's going to do it for us. Make sure you go partake in some of these uh, merchandise, new merchandise that we got here. Yeah. It's so good. So good. Go to morningmooseshow.com. Click on t-shirts and shit and help us out. Until then. Thank you for watching. Thank you to you, Ray Ray. God damn it, Rodney. Goodbye. As for me, I'm sitting here completely naked after my bath. I'm going to hopefully sleep with the first person I meet. I hope you do the same. You gotta live life, huh? Does that sound good? Great. Good night, Ben. Good night, Moose.